mowing in the fall sucks it gets dark early so we're gonna fix that we're gonna put a aux beam light bar on my zero turn company came suggested by a friend of mine who really likes their equipment i'm gonna try it out links will be in the description below this light bar is a spot flood so what it uh what it does is it has spots that go out and then has flood in the front so it should be a nice uh bar it's gonna go right here in the front it's like a perfect spot for this bar i think so let's go ahead and get started yeah, it's like kubota put these holes here for me thank you anyway so i think this is gonna fit perfect right here right in between i'm gonna be able to mount to these two holes right there and it's gonna be just it's gonna be just awesome now you can mount this uh side mount you know like this or bottom mount we're gonna be using the bottom mount uh and what that does is this channel gives you the ability to um these come already installed gives you the ability to put the clamp anywhere you want and uh then you know i should be able to rotate this a little so i'm hoping i can bottom mount it put it right here so okay all this stuff comes in the kit this actually looks like stainless steel hardware which is super nice it'll it should hold up well to the elements um, so we're just going to follow the directions here and put this thing together. All right, so we're gonna mount it in these top holes here. I don't wanna, I, I thought about mounting it down here, but you know, it'll kinda hang under this and I just feel like it might get in the way of the deck. The only thing I really don't like about this location is it covers up my Kubota sticker, but everyone knows it's a Kubota. So it's all right. But anyway, it's gonna go right there. Now I'm gonna be able to route this wire right through this little hole here. Uh, I, I will probably try to find a rubber grommet. I might have one um, because that vibration, you know, is gonna just eat away at that wire jacket. All right, so we're gonna get a rubber grommet uh, for this. I'll, I'll link to the kit I've got for rubber grommets and we'll get a little rubber grommet in there and help that out. And then we're just gonna go ahead and center this thing up and get the screws kind of tightened down and uh, see how it looks. All right, I also bought this um, wiring harness for LED light bar. This is made by Oxbeam also. I'll put a link down to that too. Basically, it comes with this little uh, switch and um, it's just got sticky tape on it. Uh, you know, it's, it's a very simple way to install it. Uh, you can use a different switch if you want, but um, it's already got a relay built into it, which is nice. It's got a relay and a fuse already built in. So you just mount this relay somewhere and then, uh, you know, connect this up to your battery. So these are going to go to your battery. This is fused and then you can run it down. Um, you know, you run your switch to wherever you want it. And then you run the uh, this connector to your um, light bar. So I will have to, uh, you know, terminate these wires, either that or I may just cut these off and uh, solder these and shrink wrap them with waterproof shrink wrap. But maybe not, I might, I might use this so that I can take it back off if I want. Um, anyway, I need to get a couple of uh, spade connectors. It didn't look like it came with those. Okay, so I, I do have some spade connectors. Um, so I'm gonna put those on. All right, I realized I had the camera totally off. I'll put these on, but anyway, I crimped these two spade connectors on. I used my set of Titan crimpers. Um, I'll, I'll link to these if you want, they're pretty nice. And these are ready to go. So they'll connect to this guy and uh, that'll be it. The last thing you need to do uh, is route the wires. And I'll be honest, it's really hard to 
show the wire routing. So I'll just give you a couple of hints of the way I generally do it. And the first thing you're gonna need to do is find a place to, you know, you gotta connect this to the battery. So, and then you're gonna have some extra wire. Like you're not gonna need all this wire. You, you could cut it, but that's a pain. So I'm gonna, it looks like I have a nice hole right here in between the battery or whatever. So I'm gonna bunch up the extra wire and keep it in there. The other thing I generally do when I'm trying to follow, you know, run wires is I try to follow the harness that's already here. So this harness is here, it goes up here, it goes over there. So I'm gonna, you know, I'm gonna run this wire right along this harness and zip tie to it because the manufacturer already ran the wires there. So probably that route is safe for wiring. So that's one thing I do. And then, like I said, I just kind of zip tie along this um, and try to get to where you need to go. So. Another piece of advice is um, start from where you need to get to and work backwards towards the battery, right? Cause you want to use up all that slack at the battery. All right, let me give you, all right, let me give you a close up. Uh, you can kind of see, I, I ran these parallel with this, you know, so I'm going to be able to zip tie this like this. Just gonna keep those nice and clean. I already zip tied those along that. Like I said, you just kind of want to run your harnesses along with the OEM harnesses as much as possible. And then I'll, you know, I'll bunch all this up and tuck it in here in a second. At this, At this point, all the electrical is hooked up. So I'm gonna um, just turn it on, make sure my light works before I tuck all those um, wires away. And then it's really hard to troubleshoot. So let's make sure everything works. And then we'll put the last couple zip ties on and clean it all up and, uh, pretty much be done okay the light bar works check it out there it is that's great here's the problem oxbeam decided to make this a green led when it's on and a red led when it's off yeah that's pretty except that's gonna run your battery dead okay this is the way your uh, harness shows up from the factory and you're gonna connect this to your battery and then as soon as you connect that to the battery, you're gonna get 12 volts constantly through the fuse and to this relay. But that 12 volts is constantly gonna also power the switch. And inside that switch is that LED light. So this light's gonna turn on as soon as you connect it to your battery. Now your circuit's ready. The way that this uh, thing works is you'll push the switch and it will close this switch. It'll run your 12 volts up here and it will energize this coil. It will close this relay and the power will run to here and it will turn this uh, LED bar on. And all that power is running through this 30 amp fuse. Now, you may be tempted to try to fix this by removing this um, circuit and rewiring it to something that is switched, you know, from your key. So usually what's gonna happen is this is gonna run through like a 10 amp fuse or something. You know, these are gonna run like your fuel pump or your PTO switch for the uh, blades or something like that and so typically that's how it's going to work so you're going to you know turn your key on and then you're going to get 12 volts here and here and here that seems like what you want except this light bar probably uses like 15 amps or you know 20 amps and it's running from this 30 amp fuse and that 30 amp fuse is now getting power from this 10 amp fuse that's switched and that's just no good uh, you cannot have this bigger fuse downstream so really you want to keep that uh, you know you want to keep that connection on your battery like I showed at the beginning. You know, you really want it to be like this because you want this 30 amp fuse to be directly connected to the battery. And then when you run power through here and you run your light bar, it's going to give it the full power you want. So I'll show you how to fix it the right way. Now your issue is right here where this is tied to this constant 12 volt source and it, and it feeds this LED light all the time. So the way to fix this is to move this circuit to a switched uh, source. So I'm gonna show what that looks like. So you're basically gonna cut this wire and you're gonna move it to a key switched source. Now that key switched source will run through a fuse, you know, probably like a five amp fuse or a 10 amp fuse. And, um, you know, then when you turn your key on, uh, you know, your keys on, you're gonna get 12 volts that comes through here. And it's gonna turn on this LED light when the key, only when the key's on. You know, this LED light probably uses like 200 milliamps or something, and it energizes this switch. And then when you push this switch, uh, it's gonna send your 12 volts, you know, through this circuit. It's going to energize your coil, and that's gonna close this relay, 
and then your power is going to run through here to your white bar. And this is probably like 20 amps or something. But, you know, this is only like 500 milliamps or maybe 700 milliamps or something small. And just this little bit of current from this, maybe like 300 milliamps. You know, so less than an amp and all that's coming from this 5 amp fuse. And when, uh, you know, when you um, turn the switch back off, you know, it de-energizes this coil and then your thing turns off. Or if you turn your key off, it basically cuts this line, which then turns your LED off and turns your switch off and turns your relay off. And then this bar right here opens back up. So it works the way that you expect and it takes the constant power off of that LED uh, light right here and it runs your coil or your relay the way that it should have been. Run. All right, let me try to explain it one more time now that you can kind of see it. Here's what happens. Power comes in from the battery, 12 volts. It goes through a 30 amp fuse and it goes into here. Inside of this, they have tied off right hot off the battery this small red wire, okay? That small red wire goes all the way up to this switch. And it, it essentially makes the switch hot all the time. It's not, you know, it's not hooked up to ground, so you're not seeing it right now. But yeah, the switch is hot all the time, see? So yeah, what I'm gonna do is right at this relay, you want the relay to still have the battery 30 amp, you know, power coming in but you just want this little red wire. This little red wire is what gives power to the coil side of the relay. You want that red wire to get power from some switched source, okay? So what's cool is over here, um, I've already found this uh, right here. There's a fuse box, a little fuse box that Kubota has put in. And all, of, all three of these are switched. Every one of these wires is switched. So none of these fuses are hot until the key's on. So I'm just gonna vampire tap one of these and then run that, you know, run this red wire off of that. So it's just, I don't know. It's a lot of work that I didn't, you know, design correctly. I, I could have just run a wire over here. So that's what I'm planning to do. Okay, again, what that's done is it's basically taken two forks and cut into the wire and it's cut into my other wire and then this covers it up. And essentially this wire is now, you know, tied off of that wire. So in theory, when I turn the key on, this wire should be 12 volts now. Okay, so I'm just gonna cut this right out of here, just this little red wire, right? As close on her as I can get. Boom, it's cut. So uh, now I just need to connect my switch to 12 volts to this. And I'm gonna do that before I, you know, solder everything together and just make sure it works. Just get these together. That's my switch. Turn the key on. Boom, key turns this on. That's exactly what you want. Then we push the button. You guys can't see it, but it turns the relay on. That's how. Got our nice Weller soldering iron. And uh, let's make this happen. Let's get real for a second. I am a perfectionist. I, I can't jam this bunch of wires in here. It's driving me crazy. We gotta fix it. Let's start cutting. We got the tools, let's do it. Let's do it the right way. All right, what you need to do a job like this, shrink wrap or heat shrink uh, to go around your wires, you need wire strippers. 
you're gonna need a soldering iron. A good one. I'll put a link to this one. This is my favorite. It's a reasonable price, homeowner. And you're gonna want a heat gun to do your heat shrink. That's what you're gonna need. Okay, that took a really long time to fix, but uh, it just it's just so much better, you know, take a look at it. Here's what it looks like up close. And uh, let's do one last test. Key on, boom. My light's on, like it should be. Push the switch, and boom, lights. Let me show you the routing one last time. Mounted right there goes right through the here. That's gonna get a rubber grommet, they're on the way. It goes right along the bottom of this frame rail. Now I'll uh, zip tie that up once I get the rubber grommet in. And it follows right back through there. It goes nicely uh, right up through this frame right here. Uh, there was this nice hole, perfect right there. And it comes up right here, it's this harness again. I always follow along an OEM harness if I can. Goes right there, goes right there, and ties to the battery. And then uh, the switch is gonna go up here. I'm gonna mount that once it gets warm out again and the adhesive works. And then remember I tied into these fuses right here to give me switch power. So that switch comes on and off with the key. That's it. Hey, I just want to give you an idea how bright this light is. It's hard to tell because it's daylight out, but uh, here, here we go. That's no light. Boom, that's light. It's hard to see, but honestly, it's really, it's really bright. It really lights up everything. So I think it's gonna be, I mean, it lights up the ground really good. I think it's gonna be great uh, when we get to fall. It's about 25 degrees out, I'm really cold. I won't be able to try this out till spring. Thanks for watching the video. Really appreciate it. If you liked it, underneath the video, there's a thumb. Hit that thumbs up. Helps out my channel. Check out the links below. Uh, if you buy something from one of those, helps my channel too. Hit subscribe, hit the bell. You'll get a notification when I put up a video. Otherwise, thanks a bunch for watching, and I appreciate it. Buy one. You'll love it. Thank you. Thanks for watching, and if you're interested in other zero-turn maintenance videos, check out my channel. I have a playlist dedicated to the maintenance I've done on my Kubota Zero Turn. I'll keep adding videos to it as I do more and more maintenance. If you enjoyed the video, hit that like button. It'll tell the YouTube algorithm to send this video out to others like you. Also, subscribe to the channel if you want to get notifications of my new videos. And check out the description for some of the links to the things that I use during the video. Thanks again.